Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing Mess by Sven Grunberg's pro-gay rock group. I'm going to explain it in a second, but let's get right into it. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. So I don't know why, but this is called Sven Grunberg's Prague Rock Group. But the thing is, they write Prague with an E and I have no idea why would you add an extra E because the word is progressive. And you know, like there is no E that comes after the D in the word progressive. So I don't really know. But with that being said, let's get right into my favorite bits from this album. So this album was created by Sven Grunberg and his, you know, prog rock group and he's from Estonia and I will be referring to the album name and the song names in English, although originally they are in Estonian. So this album is Mess and as I said it's by Sven Grunberg and his prog rock group. Now this album is actually a compilation of recordings from the years 1974 to 1977 that they made in Estonia but at that time Estonia was under a communist rule by the Soviet Union and making expressive music like this was not as easy so it took about 20 years until in 1995 a German label actually approached Sven and they both decided decided together to release these segments as an album which he was supervising the guidance for you know the artistic direction it had. And this is one of those albums that totally deserves more recognition, like not a lot of people know about this, those who do are very grateful for it I do suppose, but a lot of people don't know about Sven and who he is because of course he's not one of those creators that comes from the west, he comes from Estonia, nobody really knows what happened in Estonia and when it comes to Prague it's even more obscure. And honestly, this is not a perfect album, but it's so unique and the things that you can hear and find on it are so unlike anything you've ever listened to, which I think it's a must know for everyone who likes good prog music. Now when it comes to actual substance on this album, it's not really a substanceful album, you wouldn't say that it's like really meaty and beefy in any way, it's actually a very airy album, I think that's how I describe it, and overall if I had to say this album has two states, it has like the grounded state and the floaty state. So what I mean by that is actually that this entire album featured somewhat of a play between like modes you would say, so it can sometimes happen multiple times in one song and it can sometimes happen in the span of a couple of songs, but basically what this album does, it is has this like, you know, grounded state which is, has this, you know, really drum heavy music and it's like all very, you know, composed and the notes are like straight on the point. And then suddenly it takes this like leap of faith and just floats up towards the space and it just floats there for a while and you can really hear that in the music. It suddenly becomes more calm and more relaxing and a lot more spacey. Now some people say this is also a psychedelic album. I personally do not agree with that. I don't think that psychedelia is what I was getting from this album. I got really this atmospheric vibe like I was floating in space and of course as I said at some point it stops and then it you know goes back down to a Earth, has some more grounded and well-established music before it jumps back up again. And the songs on here, they are pretty great. As I said, they're not perfect. Most of them are very, very good. Some of them are a bit weaker, but 
you know, it's a good album. Now, we start off with the song Overture, and by this point, I've stopped counting how many albums we've had that started with the song Overture. There's so many. Like, if you look Overture up in Spotify, you're basically gonna find, like, infinite amount of results by this point. And then we are introduced to the second track, which is also my favorite, called Green Hearts. Now, Green Hearts is a very interesting track, and it's the first one to actually feature Sven singing on it. Now, he sings in Estonian, and I'm really happy for it because we see a lot of bands, like Foreign bands that choose to sing in English and don't sound really, you know, authentic to their sound, but Sven chooses to sing in Estonian, and it sounds really, really lovely, and in some way it sounds like a combination of Hungarian and German, and it's really odd, but I liked it very much, and it does fit with the overall theme and music. And another thing I was noticing on this one, the drumming, I don't remember the name of the person, but the drumming is done very much like the drumming of Nick Mason from Pink Floyd, which is really interesting, so if you like his certain type of drumming, then you might like this as well and overall this is a lovely song one of the greatest honestly that i've heard on here it's like a really really good song and it's very unlike anything you'd ever expect to hear from most prog music other memorable mentions on here, there is a song called Bright Moments, I think, which is a fantastic song, and the thing that I think it really excels in is being a great proggy alarm clock, so if you ever wanted like this alarm clock ringtone that doesn't sound all that, you know, squeaky and just annoying to listen to, and you want something that more fits with the prog vibe, you should go and see how this song begins. We also have the song Pond. Now, this song has a surprisingly and very non-coincidentally similar midsection that sounds Sounds like the one in Pink Floyd's Echoes. I don't know if Sven was like influenced by Pink Floyd, but there's a few comparisons that I can find in this album to them, although the music is pretty different. But this midsection, it's really like, you know, the seagulls part in the middle of Echoes. We also got the track Alone. Now, this track is basically Sven on the piano and some like, you know, background instruments, but nothing more than that. It's a lovely song. I didn't even put any like favorable moment on it from like the song itself because it's just so good in its entirety. I just had a fantastic time listening to it and I think it's great material to actually relax to. And lastly, we have the track of Story. Now, Story, I believe to me, is the track that really sums up this album in conceptually at least. I think it has the most, you know, elements that this album holds and I loved it very much. And you know what? I actually really have like this quote that I can tell you which would describe this album pretty good in my opinion. His reefs are sweaty, drums weak, bass is heavy, there's an oboe in this track already, mom spaghetti. <laughs> Yo, Sven, do something cool so I can take a photo of you. Okay. Thanks, it's perfect. So overall, when it comes to the rating of this album, I'm gonna have to give it a Kaheska out of Kume. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're gonna be listening to Deadwing by Porcupine Tree, the first time we're gonna listen to the tree of porcupines. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.